Hey there YouTube, today we're going to build a Hello World Node.js API. Before we get started coding, I want to take a moment and outline this series. This is the first video in a series I'll be producing for YouTube called Coding Node.js APIs. We're going to start by building a Hello World Node.js API, which is this video. We're also going to cover some basic HTTP concepts as well as how to test APIs with Postman. I'm going to be giving a little bit of a highlight on the different areas of Postman so you're comfortable using it. Next, we're going to move on to sending and querying data from a Node.js API using query parameters, using URI parameters, and then using a post request to send data to an API and save it. Then we're going to get into saving data into a database with a Node.js API, where we're going to use our post message from the previous video to save information into AWS DynamoDB. Then we're going to move on to validating the API request, so this way we know that the data coming in is validated before it gets sent to the database using a package called Express Validator. Next, we're going to move on to adding authentication to an API with AWS Cognito, where I'm going to explain how to set up and configure Cognito, as well as integrate it into our API to prevent unauthorized requests. And then finally, we're going to deploy our Node.js API to AWS using Elastic Beanstalk. Some prerequisites you'll need installed before you can follow along in this series is Node.js installed and configured on your computer. You're going to need VS Code or whatever IDE you prefer. I will be using VS Code with Windows in this series. And Postman, which is what we're going to use to test our API. And also, quick heads up, the majority of this video is actually not going to be coding. It's going to be going over some of those concepts I described earlier on. All right, let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I have VS Code open, and I have a folder open called Coding Node.js APIs. And this is where we're going to start by setting up our project. So the first thing we need to do is open a new terminal by going to Terminal and then New Terminal. I'm going to issue the command npm init hyphen y to initialize our API project. And then I'm going to issue the command npm install express, which is going to install the express.js library, which is going to be used to run our API. Now, the next thing I'm going to do to simplify our development environment is I'm going to install Nodemon, and you can do this by issuing the command npm install hyphen g to install it globally, and then Nodemon. Okay, now that Nodemon is installed, we're going to head over to package.json, and under the scripts area, we're going to create a new script in here called dev, and the command is going to be nodemon index.js. If you're unaware, Nodemon is a package that will monitor your project for changes in the files, and it will restart your project if it detects any of those changes. So now that Nodemon is set up and ready to go, we're going to go ahead and create a new file, index.js, which is going to be the main entry point for our API. Now we need to define our requirements, so we're going to const express equals require express, which is going to import the express library. And now we need to create an express app. We can do this by typing const app equals express and then an open close parens. So now we need to set up what's called a method handler. And we're going to do this by saying app.get. We're going to pass in a URI of just an empty slash here. And now we have to pass in an asynchronous callback, which takes in two parameters, a request, which we're going to abbreviate for REQ, and a response, which we're going to abbreviate RES. Pass that into a new arrow function. And just to start at a very basic level, we're going to take the response and we're going to send back Hello world. Okay, great. Let's create a couple more lines here to give some space to work with. We're going to define the port that the API is going to listen on. We can do this by const port equals 3000, which is the common port that many Node.js APIs listen on to start off with. And then we're going to tell the app to listen on that port by typing app.listen and then passing in our port value. And then finally, just to make sure things are listening properly, we're going to console.log out a little message of API is running on port. And then we're just going to pass in our port variable here. OK, so let's open our terminal back up again. And we're going to issue the command npm run dev to start up our API. And now we're going to head over to Postman to test our API. So now we've got Postman open, and we're going to start off by creating a new collection by clicking on the Collections tab on the left-hand side, and then clicking on Create Collection. 
We're going to name our collection Node.js API. Hit enter. And then inside of our collection, we're going to add a new request. So click on add requests and just say hello world for the request name. Go ahead and save it. And we'll open that request by double clicking on it and type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 3000 and go ahead and click send. And you should receive a response of hello world. So before we continue on in this series, we're going to take a break and I'm going to explain exactly what's going on in the background just to give you a little better understanding of how APIs work. So let's start by looking at the anatomy of an HTTP message. As you can see in the image on the left hand side, I have what a raw HTTP message looks like. So we're going to start by the method that's outlined in the upper left hand corner here. The HTTP spec has different methods that can be sent along with the message and that will tell our API how to handle the various requests that's coming in. The resource is the next thing we're going to look at. That's the URI that happens after the address. And this is also going to be used when we get into the next video where we handle routing. We're going to see how the different resources that are sent along with our message can be handled differently. The version you can see outlined is the version of the message that's being sent through. The headers are key value pairs of settings or information. Again, that just tell our API how to handle and process the specific message. The most important one, in my opinion, is the authentication parameter which is going to be used pretty heavily through most APIs that are uh, locked behind a username and password. And the last section here is the body of the message, which contains the information you're going to send to your API, or if it is a response, it is the information your API might be sending back to you. Next, we're going to take a look at Postman, and we're going to see some of the different areas of Postman. So the first one I want to call out is on the left-hand sidebar, the Collections, Folders, and Requests area. Collections can contain folders and requests, and folders can contain requests, but also nested folders. Settings can be inherited from the parent folders and collections, so you can right-click on any collection or folder, uh, set a setting for the requests below, and then set the request to inherit those settings, which is very useful if you need to share settings between multiple types of requests. And it's very useful for testing authentication since we will be passing one authentication header throughout our entire API when we get into the authentication section of this series. Next, we're going to move on to the address bar, which is highlighted towards the top. This is where you are going to enter the URI for the endpoint you want to test. You can also add query parameters to the URI here, which is used for filtering. We'll get into that in the next video. Next is the request area, which you can see highlighted there. Uh, the request area contains configuration options for a specific request before it is sent. Uh, you can configure things such as query parameters, authentication headers, uh, the body to send to the API, and much more that we're going to cover in this course. You can configure your various request headers to have some sort of scripting built in so you can pass variables from request to request to request, but that's far beyond the scope of what we're looking to explore in this series. Next, we're going to take a look at the response area, which contains the information sent back from the API that we can review for validating their API is doing what it's supposed to. Some of the more important aspects of this area are the status in the upper right hand corner, along with the response time and response size. And then you can also look at the response body below, along with any headers that the API might have set. And the last Postman area we're going to look at is the environments area in the upper right hand corner. You can see I've clicked on where it says no environment to drop down this, this view here. In the environments area, you can configure variables to be referenced throughout all of your requests you currently have active. You can configure multiple environments such as dev, test, and prod, and specific variables for each of those environments so you can quickly switch between where exactly you're sending your requests to, which is going to become useful in the last video where we deploy our API out to AWS. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share the video. I'm also live right here on YouTube every Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central. For channel updates or to get in touch with me, follow me on Twitter at BrianMMDev or join my Discord using the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.